Let's construct a histogram for the data which represents heights in centimeters for 26 bean trees. The first column represents heights in centimeters while the second column represents frequency. Before drawing the histogram, we need to remember that each interval represents a range of values. Here we have for you what that would represent for each interval. For the first interval, 3.5 less than equals x less than 8.5. For the second interval, 8.5 less than equals x less than 13.5. Notice that we're using the boundaries, the lower class boundaries and the upper class boundaries for the respective intervals. For the third interval, 13.5 less than equals x less than 18.5 and for the final interval that would be 18.5 less than equals x less than 23.5. We need to remember these when we draw our histogram. So now we're going to go to our graph. Before we do that, let's check the scale. We have a defined scale. Construct a histogram for the data using a scale of two centimeters to represent five units on the x-axis and one centimeter to represent two units on the y-axis. Keep that scale in mind as we draw our histogram. So here I have for you the graph. It's already labeled for the x-axis and the y-axis. Notice that for the x-axis, every two centimeter is already marked. For the y-axis, the scale being one to two, centi one centimeter to two units is also marked already. Now let's put in the values. When drawing the histogram, I recommend that you skip your first two centimeters to make allowance for a frequency polygon. Let's now go back. Remember, I'll have this here for you. Keep in mind that we're using the class boundaries when labeling your x-axis. We have here 3.5, so we record that. 8.5, 13.5, 18.5, and 23.5. This x-axis represents the variable heights in centimeters. Now for the y-axis, the scale is one centimeter to represent two units. But if we notice for our frequency, the values ranges from three and the highest being 10. So we need to make sure that we make allowance for all of that. One centimeter to two units, so we mark it. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, I'll put an extra one at top. And the y-axis, that represents the frequency. Now that we have that ready, we are ready to draw our bars on our histogram. For the first bar, 3.5 to 8.5, that one has a frequency of eight. For your graph, locate eight on your frequency or y-axis. We have located eight. So for our first bar, we know how high it's going to be. We're using your ruler and your pencils. You draw that bar. From there, we can continue to draw our histogram with the second bar having a frequency of three. Locate three on your y-axis. That means our second bar from 8.5, I'll bring this back for you, from 8.5 to 13.5, that one will go as high as three. Again, make sure you have your rulers handy. There we go. For our third bar, that one, 13.5 to 18.5, has a frequency of 10. Frequency of 10 is located. We know how high that bar is going to be, and so we construct it.
And for our final bar, because we have four intervals here, it's 18.5 to 23.5. That one has a frequency of five, locating five on our y-axis. Across, we know how high that bar is going to be again. And this gives us our final bar for our histogram. And there you have it, your histogram. Now with this histogram, we can use it to answer several questions. Let's start with one of the most common questions being asked when given group data. Here we have question two. Determine the modal class. This can be determined from your table of values or using your histogram, but let's go back to our table of values. Originally, if we look at our table, the modal class is a class with the highest frequency. Locate the highest frequency. Here we have it, 10, which means then that 14 to 18 will be our modal class. And we record it. Let's now answer the third question. Determine the modal height. To get our modal height, that cannot be read from your table of values because that interval means it's a range of values. We don't know from this 10 if maybe two of those represents 14 cm, 15 centimeters, 16 centimeters. We don't know for sure. So to be very sure to get our modal height, we need our histogram. Now make sure you have your rulers again handy and your pencils or pen. To get the modal height, look for the highest bar. For us, the highest bar is this bar, the third one. And notice that this is also the modal classes bar. So to draw this now, we're going to be creating an X. From the upper left corner of that highest bar, using your rulers, you draw a line to the upper left corner of the following bar. To draw the second line from the upper right corner of that tallest bar, you join it to the upper right corner of the previous bar. So you have a perfectly defined X. But that's not the modal height. To get the modal height now, the intersection where those two lines meet, from that point, you're going to draw a vertical line to your X axis. X marks the spot. Exactly at the point where that line touches your X axis, it defines your model height in this case. Now, this can be difficult to read depending on your scale. Again, our scale is two centimeters to five units. To help you figure out what exactly or where exactly that modal position is, you need to understand what each of these little boxes might mean. One easy way I would recommend is ratio. Here we have 5, 10, 15, 20. I'll put that calculation here. You have 20 miniature boxes that represents five units. But, how many of those boxes would represent one unit? Ratio is always useful. It's one concept that I would always recommend. So that cross multiplying here would give us 20 times one divided by five. That means four. For every four miniature box, that's equivalent to one unit. So let me mark that for you. So you can clearly see it. If you count it, 13.5, 14.5, 15.5, 16.5, 17.5, 18.5. For us, this one landed perfectly at 16.5. So it means then that our modal height for this set of data is 16.5 centimeters. That's the height that is most common for the 26 bean trees.
Okay, students, so now we have the modal height, and that's it for the histogram. We have, look, let's just do a recap of that. We had data set representing heights for 26 bean trees. For the histogram, we had a defined scale, two centimeters to represent five units on the x-axis, one centimeter to represent two units on the y-axis. So here's the graph for that. Again, please take note, we advise that you skip the first two centimeters. And that again makes allowance for a frequency polygon. Remember to label your axis and state your scale. I didn't write the scale at the beginning. However, it's given, so it should be quick to write, two centimeters to represent five units for your X axis and one centimeter to represent two units for your y-axis. It takes about three seconds to write it, so remember to do that. Remember also that, I have put this here for you again, that for the x-axis, we're using the boundaries, the lower class boundaries and the upper class boundaries for each class intervals. When determining the modal class, that one, you can read it from your table of values. For your table of values, 10 being the highest frequency means that 14 to 18, that interval is your modal class and the unit centimeters. To determine the modal height, we cannot read that from our table of values. So we go back to our handy dandy histogram. And remember, you're going to be creating an X. The X will always come for or start from the upper corners of the highest bar and be joined with the bars next to them. But the upper left corner to the upper left of the following, the upper right corner to the upper right of the previous bar. Where the X meets, at that intersection, you draw a vertical line down to your X axis. And this part again can be tricky, but take your time, 5, 10, 15, 20. 20 of the miniature boxes represents five units. So how many of those boxes is equivalent to one unit ratio? 20 times one divided by five gives us four. So four of those miniature boxes is equivalent to one unit. Take your time, count the four, mark it, one, two, three, four, you mark it again, one, two, three, four, and you can always confirm this, 13.5, 14.5, 15.5, 16.5, 17.5, 18.5. So it is an even marking. And lucky for us, the vertical line from the intersection was on point here at exactly 16.5 making 16.5 the modal height for the trees, or the most common height amongst the bean trees. Be sure to check at the end of this video for additional practice questions.